Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to dive into a hot topic that's shaking up the tech landscape. Big Apple is being sued and it could transform everything you know about iPhones and the Apple ecosystem. Have you ever imagined being able to choose any app or payment system, not just the ones offered by Apple? What if I tell you that your next iPhone might be radically different than anything you've ever seen? Before continuing, comment below if you would like to install any app application you want. You have already paid dearly for your iPhone, right? Or should Apple control everything and keep its system closed under the guise of protecting users? Comment below. Let's talk. Did you know that Apple is being sued in the United States? Well, this can change some things in your life. I'll give you more details going forward. Do you think this will make the iPhone better or worse? And will there be any changes to your Mac? Prices are going to increase. They usually do, don't they? Believe it or not, this does matter to your life. It even affects Android users. News is coming out worldwide about disputes between the European Union and Apple. And the last victory in Europe was over the use of USB-C and iPhone 15. You know that little bit where you have the Android charger, then the Apple user comes along and now your charger doesn't fit? Some points are valid, but others Europe has requested and hasn't received. They got this charger, so from the iPhone 15, you will see that you can use any charger that you use for Motorola, Samsung, Xiaomi, and so on. But today's video isn't about that. This time, Apple is being sued on its own ground. Yes, Apple is a company based in Cupertino, California. You know that building shaped like a flying saucer from where they always broadcast the event, where even I am broadcasting the event now? Yes, that's the place. And who is suing Apple? The United States. It's not an external fight, it's Americans against Americans, which is quite surprising. We're in 2024, and this month the United States Department of Justice charged Apple with illegal monopoly and several other things. If you look for the U.S. Department of Justice, you'll find all the information, but I'll summarize the main points of the charges. A lot of stuff that had been stuck in limbo for a long time is being brought to light now. First, iOS, the operating system of iPhones, is very closed. It has its pros, but also many cons. Apple always says that for security, for privacy, it doesn't allow various things. But in this lawsuit in the United States, that's being challenged. They argue that Apple uses these privacy and security excuses to limit users by increasingly tying them to Apple products. For instance, would you like to use a non-Apple Watch to respond to messages? You can't. Wanted to install another app store like the Amazon App Store or Samsung Store. You can't do that either. And about payments, did you know that on Android you can have Google Pay, Samsung Pay, and also banking apps all at once? Exactly. This is something that is being questioned right now. That's up for discussion. For example, if you buy two new MacBooks, if you have the money, of course, and swap parts between them, even if they are original, they stop working because they detect the parts as non-original. This is an anti-consumer practice, a battle that Europe has been having with Apple for many years. If you swap the front camera of two iPhone 15 Pro Maxes, they both lose Face ID, the unlocking feature. If you switch the screen, both lose True Tone. Apple defends these practices as privacy and security measures, but they're now under serious scrutiny. To clarify, this closely mirrors debates that have already occurred in Europe, but now it's the United States that's unnecessarily stirring up these issues. And when changes occur domestically, they tend to be more severe. In Europe, if the situation exacerbates, Apple might stop selling the iPhone there. But in the United States, as the home country, Apple tends to bow down and comply. The Department of Justice complaint highlighted many points, not just the ones I mentioned. One of them is super apps. For those unfamiliar, a super app is basically like WeChat in China, which is the best example. In Brazil, WhatsApp tried to offer payments, faced issues, and is now planning to reintroduce the feature. Imagine if you could log in, pay the bills, and even use maps through WhatsApp. 
it would make it a super app, something indispensable. Apple imposes strict restrictions on these super apps because it wants people to buy the iPhone and not just any device to access WeChat or WhatsApp. These restrictions stop apps from acting as assistants or data providers, and many restrictions are imposed on the system so that no app becomes a super app on the iPhone. Another point to consider is about streaming and cloud services. Take, for instance, Microsoft's Xbox Cloud, a service where you pay a monthly fee and have access to a virtual console from anywhere. On an iPhone, the experience is awful, requiring access through the Safari browser, and the gaming experience is extremely limited. Apple goes all out to not offer games, forcing you to purchase each title separately or subscribe to Apple Arcade. Apple takes 30% from everything in its store. Apple does everything to make the market difficult. In the case of Apple games, Fortnite is on both Android and iPhone. Samsung, Apple's Samsung Live. You can install Fortnite on other devices, but not on iOS because Apple doesn't want to share the profit and allow something that doesn't follow their rules. It's hard to understand because once you buy the iPhone, it should be yours, but you can't do what you want with it. This monopoly has been questioned for a long time and exploded a few years ago when Fortnite was removed from the iPhone. Games and services are only on the iPhone if Apple allows it. This has also affected Spotify because a portion of the subscriptions have to be given to Apple, encouraging people to subscribe directly through Spotify's website, which is not allowed. You have to use the iOS system that encourages subscriptions through the Apple Store so Apple can earn a share of the revenue. The question is whether all of this is justified or not. There should be more options, but currently on the iPhone, there aren't any. If you don't follow Apple's rules, it's simply not available. And that's something that the process is trying to change in both Europe and the United States. Apple is being forced to allow alternative stores and the installation of third-party apps. Recently, Apple suggested in Europe that up to 1 million downloads of an outside app could be free of charge, but afterwards it would cost 50 cents per install. If your app is free, this would become unsustainable quickly. Speaking of which, the situation in the United States about this process starting in March is quite complicated. This legal battle at the U.S. Department of Justice could completely overhaul the company, turning it into an incredibly new version as early as next year. Can you picture an iPhone 16 with an alternative app store or installing Steam on your iPhone and being able to download any exclusive game from there? Before we proceed, remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video to stay updated. You didn't think I would ask, did you? Thought I had forgotten, eh? Your likes and subscriptions help the project grow, and with the project's growth, I can bring more interesting videos to you, Deal. Thanks for the support. Continuing, going back to the consumer benefits that this American lawsuit against Apple can bring, wouldn't it be nice to have apps that you're already familiar with only cheaper purchased directly from the developer's website? This is already common on PCs. You go to sites like drive.google.com and download Google Drive or the Office website to download Office directly. If you want alternatives like Microsoft Office, you can also download them at no cost. Something that really bothers, especially young Americans, is IE Message, the green bubbles. When someone who has Android receives a message like you have an iPhone there, correct? And you have Android. So you're there on Android, you install iMessage, okay? And then you interact with Android and interact with the iPhone. Android sending a message to the iPhone. You know what happens? They have different colors of bubbles. So what happens? When Android sends a message to someone with an iPhone in the same chat, the chat has fewer features. So the iPhone user doesn't want an Android user in the chat. It's a clear form of discrimination. The lawsuit also mentions that smartwatches are part of Apple's alleged monopoly. The Apple Watch only works with the iPhone, which is strange because it doesn't even work with the iPad, even though they're products from the same company. 
We've already seen in other systems that when there's a will, it's possible to make a smartwatch work with any phone using only an app and internet connection. Apple could make the Apple Watch work on Android if it wanted to. They even tried, according to them, but they couldn't. If a hacker can do it, right? I'm asking this to you. If a hacker can make a hacked app work perfectly on brands like Motorola, Xiaomi, Realme, why wouldn't a tech giant like Apple be able to? Talking about digital wallets, I saw that Apple using Apple Wallet also charges 15% on transactions via Apple Pay. Having payment solutions offered by the banks you have accounts with would definitely be cheaper options. All this proves that the technology provided to the final consumer is often subpar or more expensive, specifically to keep people tied to the Apple ecosystem. Under the excuse of privacy and security, the United States is accusing Apple of harming Americans with worse, inferior and costlier products. And comparing with the case in Europe where Apple was fined this year for anti-competitive practices in music streaming, it's clear that Apple isn't interested in allowing other music streaming companies to have competitive pricing or similar quality. This results in lower quality service for the consumer, more expensive and less innovative, keeping everyone more stuck with iOS. The one that suffers is your iPhone. Me, you, you who want to buy an iPhone. Maybe in the future you'll have a more open iPhone. 2024 is a critical year with actions from Spotify, Epic Games, Europe and the United States all against Apple. Have you considered replacing Siri on your iPhone? Every iOS user knows how bad Siri is. Could you imagine swapping it for Alexa, which isn't great either, but at least would give you the option to try? On Android, you can replace the assistant with almost anything. And what about the backup on your iPhone? Why can it only be on iCloud? Why can't it be on Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox with which you already have an account, right? For example, you already have OneDrive through Office 365. You have to pay extra for iCloud, even if you want to make your backup on WhatsApp. Only those who have had everything deleted on WhatsApp know how painful it is, right? These type of questions are up in the air and maybe some of these things will change after this process is over. Let's follow along, let's hope. Leave your ideas and questions in the comments. I would love to discuss the video topics. If you like the video, click like, share it, subscribe. Right now, there are indications of upcoming videos that make perfect sense for you to watch appearing here. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.